So the key thing is getting each person assigned to the task that needs to get done. But now let's go deeper. Here's why it works so well. People just do better when they know what they're supposed to be doing. Hello to you and welcome to another episode of Backstage Business. We're at episode number 59 of Backstage Business, but I'd have to add them all up together because I started Get Genius years ago. And if we added those all up together, I know we'd be probably in the hundreds of how many episodes we've we've got going. We switched the name and then turned it into a, a new series. So we're at number 59 of Backstage Business, and we're talking today about your roles in the lanes of your team. And I just have to sidetrack for, for a little bit. I'm standing at my new stand-up desk that I created at home for the home office. And because we've been, I've mentioned before, because we've been going through this renovation and moving things around and going through construction and all these things at our house, the office has been kind of it keeps evolving, like wherever we can make it happen. And we're just starting to really focus on, on our office now at home. So because of that, I've been using, which is really great for those of you that podcast or do videos and need a really good mic. I've been using this tiny little portable mic called smart mic, and it's been, it's been working. It might sound echoey and that's just because of the space that I'm in. I don't have all the soundproofing stuff yet to make it sound even better. And I've gone through probably in these last few years of podcasting, I've actually gone through a few microphones and tried different ones out. And I've got my new Yeti that has always been my favorite coming today. So I'm really excited. So all this to say that sound quality should start to really improve after this episode. Fingers crossed. (laughs) I'm always learning. But anyways, I just wanted to share that with you just just because I hope you guys are getting value out of these episodes. I really do. And if you are, huge, huge favor. We don't really do a lot of promotion in terms of of the podcast and getting people to write reviews. So it's really just asking you listeners. We might start to experiment with that and see, you know, how can we get people who are really enjoying this to write some reviews? Because that's really the only way that other people can start to hear about it. So we'd love if you could do that. Head over to wherever you're listening to this podcast and just write a quick review, especially if there's a certain episode that moved the needle for you and and really spoke to you. That would be awesome. I'm really looking to bring you value. And a lot of these episodes are about me sharing things that I have learned and I know would be so valuable to other people, things that I wish I had learned sooner but I did it. And that's actually okay because the lesson was probably that much stronger because of the way that I did learn it. So that being said, I would love if you could go rate and write a review on whatever platform you are listening to this podcast on. Okay. So let's get into today's episode. I actually, I promised you this episode and here it is. I think it was a few episodes back that I talked about, you know what, I should, I should do something about this topic. And it's something that has proven over and over again to be so important in my business and with my team. And it is the importance of roles and lanes of of my employees and of the contractors and people that just make the draw shop happen. In the very beginning of my business, I, like many of you probably relate to, wore so many hats. I was responsible for the roles of many people. And you know what? That's how most businesses start. And I don't regret any of that one bit, but it wasn't long before I became overwhelmed. You reach that point where you're like, can't, can't keep doing this. Can't grow your business. If it's all going to be you, it turned out to be a big, huge lesson for me. So I, at the time was, I was the sales department. I was the contract and invoicing department, the marketing department, the bookkeeper, the project manager, the HR department, I was customer service. You you get the picture. I was all of those things. But when it's your business, you're more likely to withstand the overwhelm because you see what the win 
what the win is going to be. But if you're an employee who isn't as vested in seeing that win, you have a different level of win and they're just not as as invested in the business as you are, it can become total confusion and of, of what they are supposed to do. And that overwhelm of like, wait, I'm responsible for all these things. I'm not actually sure what I'm responsible for. What should I be doing? It's just, it's total confusion. And I think that, you know, as, as a human, when you're confused, you lose that mojo to do good things. You just become stifled. So why is this important? Well, let's look at the good things that come when team members not only know their own lane to stay in and what their role is and responsibilities are, but also what their teammates' roles and responsibilities are as well. One of the best things you can know when starting a job or a project is to know what a favorable outcome is. In other words, what does success look like? You want something to measure so that you can aim for something and of course feel proud of the work you've done and the goals you have accomplished. And the best way to make company goals happen is to have a whole team working toward them and everyone has their role in making the goals happen. So whether you're in the sales department or customer service or production, you're all working together to make the sales happen, to make the customers happy, to make the quality on par or beyond. And that makes working together to keep the whole engine moving. When each team member knows what they're responsible for, and then they know what the other team members are responsible for, the workflow is so much more efficient and fluid because each person knows what to do and who to ask when it's not in their lane to make it happen. And when the workflow is efficient and there's someone to do all the parts of the project, Here's the amazing thing. Stuff gets done. It actually gets done. It's not just an idea that people got overwhelmed with and then it just got lost. And this is what I love about having this organized. So I mentioned the reason this whole topic and podcast came up is that I mentioned before when I was talking about my favorite tools and even on an episode before that is I use something called Miro. And Miro allows me to create a mind map where we see we see our org chart and everyone on the team and who is responsible for what things. Simple, right? You've heard of an org chart before, you know that. But it's the way that it lays it out so that everyone has access to it and can see who is doing what. And you can change it really easily as well as things start to evolve or you start to see where somebody thrives in another area that they might not have really thrived before or or you discovered that oh my gosh this is a, a hidden talent that they have let's let's add this and maybe take something else away from them so when we start a project we break out what needs to be done to get this project to a successful finish i've maybe mentioned this before but through Dan Sullivan at strategic coach we have something that's called an impact filter it's a tool that where you reverse engineer a goal. So if you have an idea, you vet it out with the impact filter, like what does a successful outcome look like? What happens if we don't move forward with this? What happens if we do? What are the risks involved? And then when you determine that it's something you actually want to do, you are, you outline what has to be done in order to make it to that successful finish. So in doing that, we outline all of the things that need to be done to get that done. And by the way, if it's something like a new promotion, whatever that is, you you can actually put make that a template. So when you have a new idea, you can actually create a template of, okay, well, in order to make this happen, we're going to need all of these items, an email sequence, a website, a landing page, all of those things. And you every each time that you do this, you start to shorten the length of the project, making it actually successful because you go, oh my gosh, these are the people that are in charge of these different items. And we know that these are the items we need for most of the projects or new services that we start. So when we have all of this in Miro, the the chart 
of all the people, the employees, all the team members, the contractors, everyone that's working to make our our business happen and keep going, it allows my project manager of these different ideas and projects to look at what is needed and who's going to be assigned those pieces. So instead of asking a million different people, okay, well, who should I call for this? Or who should I email about that? Instead, it's like, oh, we've got this project. Here's where I go to. Now I can go to Asana, which I mentioned before. We use Asana and assign those people and then assign the due date to get these things done. And that's that all is organized so that once that one thing is done, we then know that this person on the work chart is now assigned to this part of the project and it just keeps moving. Hey guys, and thank you so much for tuning in to the Backstage Business Podcast. I wanted to let you know that this episode is brought to you by The Draw Shop. At The Draw Shop, we make animated videos that just work. Did you know that most businesses are struggling to increase their sales simply because they don't stand out? At The Draw Shop, we use a scientifically proven formula to create animated videos that just work. With customers such as Uber, Twitter, Google, United Nations, Lockheed Martin, Netflix, and more, we know that creating messages that are impossible to misunderstand, it's critical to attracting more customers and keeping your audience engaged so that you can stand out as the best in your industry. Find out more information at thedrawshop.com. So the real point of this is I'm I'm trying to get you excited about making projects, making ideas happen and reach their successful outcome. So the key thing is getting each person assigned to the task that needs to get done. But now let's go deeper. Here's, Here's why it works so well. People just do better when they know what they're supposed to be doing. Again, it's eliminating that confusion, that thing that just stops them in their track. And it's like, I can't, I can't move forward because I'm so overwhelmed. When you have clarity, you just do better. So if we, we have a sponsorship with Amy Porterfield on her podcast and she will talk about our business and she will say, where there is clarity, there is revenue. And we, we live by that where there's clarity, there's revenue. And everything that we do, what we do for our clients, it's all about getting clear because where there is clarity, there is revenue, whether it comes to your messaging and whether it comes to your actual brain and having to execute on something. You're just, you're pumped up, you know, where are we going? And it's such a good feeling. So this is, Miro is, has been so awesome. And I wish I could explain it even better. I'm giving you just one feature of it, but it's really, really awesome. And if you want to actually check it out, keep listening. I'm going to, I'm going to tell you where you can find out how to use it for, for free. And you can actually see all of the other capabilities it has, but let's, let's go deeper into how to define the roles within your team. So now you're like, okay, I get that they have to be clear on what they're doing, but how do we how do we define the roles within the team? Like how do how do we get there and make sure that everybody is doing what they're supposed to be doing? So this process that we go through was introduced to me by my project manager. So this is this is the guy that when I have all of my you know one thousand ideas that I do all of the time. And if you're an entrepreneur, you get it. You constantly have ideas all day long. Once it's vetted out and it's something that we decide that we should move forward with, I will send it to my project manager and then he puts it into Asana. He checks out Miro to see who needs to be assigned to what task and it gets done. So project manager that I'm talking about introduced this process to me on how to even get this org chart organized because I thought I had that. I actually, I thought, yeah, we know who does what. It's all good. We, we, we got this. We probably just have this on like a Google doc or a spreadsheet somewhere. But when he organized it for us, it was just like, oh, wow, this is, this is so great for every single person on our team to, to look at. So here's the process. I'm going to share that process with you in case you're going, well, how do I get organized like that? So I think it's about, oh, I don't know. It's maybe like four or five steps, something like that. So let me break it down for you. The first step is, is prepping. So what we do is we 
create the name of each team member, and then we ask them what they think their role is and what their responsibilities are. So this is something that you could send out. The way we did it was just, it was a Google Doc, and it was like, okay, you know, just enter in your name here. It was shared and list out what your what your role is and what your responsibilities are. The key here is what they think it is. So this is where you're going to start to see some things revealed. So what do you think your role is and what do you think your responsibilities are? What are you doing on a daily basis? What do you contribute? The next step is then we listed the responsibilities of each and what we thought they were. Us, meaning the, the managers at the top here. Not at the top, that sounds, <laughs> but you know who's, who's overseeing all of the, the projects. So we would list what we think they are responsible for. The next step was that we would create a list of items that were not designated to anyone. So now you'd look and you go, oh, wait, we don't actually have somebody to check to see if the website is down, or we don't really have somebody to do these type of reports or whatever, wherever there's overlap and confusion, you're also going to see, wait, we actually have three different people doing this. We only need one person doing it, or there's too many people here doing landing pages, whatever, whatever stands out to you as being fuzzy and unclear. So then you create that list. That's its own list. Now, step four, here's where we would create the roles. Here, here are the roles that this business has, which is, you know, customer project manager or backend project manager, customer support, copywriter, art director, artist, web developer, digital marketer, social media manager, all of those type roles that your business has. So what you're also going to see here when you do this is, okay, there's one person that has the same role, which you may very well need. Some people need multiple social media managers. Some people need multiple copywriters. All good. But you're going to start to see, oh, wait a minute. We don't need this. We do need this. Because you're going to put each person's name under that role. So now you've got everybody who listed what their role is, what their responsibilities are, and you're going to put those people under those role names. So now we're at the point where we come together and we discuss what we have here. Now in Miro, it's going to look like these little post-it notes. There's, it, there's like this, it's a, it's a really cool digital chart of, of how you do this, but you can do this process within Miro. You don't have to. I'm just suggesting it because I, I love it. And it became so clear to me. You can also do this on a big whiteboard. <laughs> if you want to, you can have everybody write in, what it is that they do, that's fine too. And then write it out on, on a whiteboard, but somewhere you've got to have it in a digital way so that it doesn't get lost and everybody can access it. That's the goal. But in terms of doing the process, totally up to you how you do that. So what we do is, is we now take all of this information that we have, the list that we have. So we have the names of the team members, what they think their responsibilities are. We have the list of the team members and what we what us who are overseeing projects and management think their responsibilities are. And then we have the list of all of the items that were not designated to anywhere, anyone. And we also have the list of where is their overlap and where is their confusion. So then we also have the title, the roles, the roles that we know that we need. And then we started to go, okay, this person comes under here. This person comes under there. And this is now we're at the point of, discussing everything. So now you're going to start to see where the blockers are. What is getting in the way of one person doing their job? And this is where someone would say, and I'm saying this because this happened in our business. Oh, I thought I was supposed to ask Lori for that. Oh, wasn't he supposed to be in charge of all those things? So you're saying I'm in charge of it? Things like that. So we look into all of this as a team and then we start to clearly define it and we go over it with each individual team member and say, okay, so now these are the things that you moving forward are responsible for. And if we have a new project, project manager is going to come to you and he's going to assign you this. This is, this is your role. 
and we get super, super, super clear. Once we've clearly defined each person and their role, we've assigned the things, we've either hired somebody new to take care of the things that were overlap and confusion or nobody was taking, nobody was responsible before we we hire or we see who might want to take on that new responsibility. So we just make sure though, that it is assigned to somebody or that we hire somebody to take care of that. That's something that you will determine in your business. Once we have all of that, we finalize the digital chart so that everyone who, everyone can see who is responsible for what. And with Again, with those that are unassigned, we just determine who's going to take that on or if the position needs to be filled with either an existing team member or a new team member, or perhaps it doesn't have to be a whole new hire. It could just be a virtual assistant or another contractor. So you have that list and it might be an ongoing list because you might start to say, okay, here's a new project. We're actually introducing something new, but we don't have the person to fill this role. So that list should always be there so that everybody is is clear on that. And honestly, that's it. Like, that's it. That's that's the whole process. It's 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 not overwhelming. It's actually really fun going through it. You might go into it thinking it's overwhelming, but it's not because you're having each person do they're part of it. And then you're having each person come together, discuss it. You discuss it with your individual team members. Then you discuss it all together and you, you finalize this map so that everyone can see who does what. And it's so fun when you get super clear on everything. It makes you so excited to move forward because you know you're going to be that much more efficient. And then really all we do with this is we review it on a quarterly basis with each team member. And we then assign at the beginning, I was talking about what does success look like for these roles. We assign those success measurements to each person, to each role, so that they have a vested interest to make it happen. I always say that each person's role is like their own little business and it's they're they're like the 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 CEO of their own department and so they've got to do the things to make it happen because I'm going to incentivize them to get excited about making those those successful goals happen. So what does success look like? Well, here's what it would look like and if you achieve it Here's the incentive for you. Just like we as CEOs, as entrepreneurs, as business owners have, we know what success looks like because when we reach that success, we get rewarded for it. And so that's that's simply what we do. So I mentioned earlier, if you're wanting to use Miro like we do, you can go sign up for Miro. There is a free I, I know there's a, a free version of it, which is incredible. And just go to the drawshop.com forward slash Miro. It's M I R O. And that'll also be in the show notes. So the drawshop.com forward slash Miro, it'll take you right there and you'll see how you can use it for free. And you'll also be able to see all the different things that it does. This is specifically what we use it for and we absolutely love it. So thank you so much. I hope this was helpful. I know I go off on tangents sometimes because I get so excited. I try to keep it as simple as possible and I hope that it was and I appreciate you guys listening and we'll see you next time. Hey guys, I just want to say thank you so much for listening to this podcast. If you haven't already done so, would you do me a favor and go subscribe and review this podcast? My goal is to continue to deliver you content that will really move the revenue needle in your business and give you up-to-date content on anything else that can dramatically help your business. You can also find us at thedrawshop.com slash podcast where you can comment on the podcast or contact us directly with any issues you'd like me to address. Thanks again. I really, really appreciate you listening and I'll see you next time.